Welcome back everybody to a, another VBA tutorial. We are continuing our little series on web scraping with VBA in our last video. We basically got an Internet Explorer application up and running uh, and then we grab the HTML code that belongs to that particular web page that we landed at, in this case, YouTube. So uh, before we actually begin parsing it, just for those of you who might not be, you know, overly familiar with, um, you know, HTML code and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, basically, once you're at a page, if you ever want to kind of inspect the actual code itself, um, what you can do is you can just do inspect element. So if you just right click. Uh, there's inspect element down here, or you can do view source that will take you to a new page. But basically, all the code that you're seeing right now, oh geez, I hope it didn't freeze. Did it freeze? Uh -oh. Hold on. It might have froze. Okay, there we go. So basically, the entire structure of the web page is defined by the HTML code. So basically, how things are laid out. The CSS code is more about the styling aspect of that web page, so the fonts, the coloring, the spacing, a lot more of the kind of design component. And then the JavaScript is more for about the interactive component. So if I click a button, we not, you know a color might change. It might you know change the font or something like that. That's more of the JavaScript. Now, for most people who are web scraping, they want to get the actual text. They want to get the actual text that you see here. They might want to see different things like, hey, I want to get links and things along that nature. So when you're web scraping in that component, what you're really looking for is the HTML code because that's where all the text is going to be stored. And so when we're web scraping, we want to parse the HTML code. Well, you can see right here, I'm going to try to bring this up a little bit, hopefully it's not freezing anything. This is the HTML code. And so if you look here, you, you can kind of actually just take click this little button and then if you hover over the section, it will take you there. All the information that we're looking for is in the HTML code. In fact, you can see it right here. So you can see the actual text. So our goal is when we take this HTML code is we want to navigate to the section that contains the information we want and then we want to parse the text out of it. That's usually how it goes. Um, sometimes we want to get links and things along that nature. Sometimes we want to kind of interact with our web page and maybe click a button to get some more additional information. But generally, it's navigating to a certain component and then it's parsing that component for the information that you're looking for. Now, for some web pages, the HTML code can be very, what's the word, complex. There's a lot of different components of it. So you have to just sometimes explore. You're going to have to explore the code and see where the information it lies and is there any kind of pattern behind it. So for example, if I want to get the title of each movie, you know, does it have some kind of similar class? Does it have some kind of similar ID? Something. That's how I like to look about things is I try to find, uh, what is the word, patterns in the actual HTML code because that makes parsing it a lot easier. So now that we kind of have a at least a really high level of kind of the HTML code, how do we actually interact with it and parse it? Well, this is where the, the actual VBA object library, I have to say, coming from Beautiful Soup, I was very skeptical, but this HTML object reference, it's very well done. And it actually makes working with the HTML code, I think, 10 times easier than Beautiful Soup. So whoever it made Beautiful Soup, if they could kind of mimic what... Uh, Microsoft did here. Oh, you've got a fan for life. But for example, maybe we want to navigate to a particular element and we want to get the text from that element. So uh, let's just grab an element using the ID. So grab an HTML element by its ID. And so what we'll do is we'll print out whatever we get. And so we'll take our IE document. That's just the HTML code and we'll get element by ID. Now the ID is unique. You shouldn't be seeing duplicates of the ID, so that's why it's get element, not elements. And maybe I want the header, and then I just want the inner text. I just want the text. Now I'm gonna try to remember where it is, but I can't necessarily remember because I wrote this at a different spot. Uh, I wanna say it's here. 
if it takes too long, I'm just going to skip it. Yeah, okay. We're just going to have to go blindly. Um, but basically, this is going to find the element that has the header, and then it's going to return that text. And so, again, we have to load the page. And did it not get anything? Nope, didn't get anything. Well, let's do a different one. I don't want that one. I want I want something with an ID with something I can. Okay, here we go. No, that's not going to work either. Mm, ID, footer, footer logo. I'm trying to find something that has text in it, and it's actually a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> it's usually how it works. Uh, uh, I think we tried this. That might work, the login component. I'm going to go back to VBA. Okay, let's try that. Now keep in mind, there's usually like a family tree component. So, okay, perfect. So that, in this case, it did return text. And the second one technically did, but there was no text. So it must've been different when I loaded it at my uh, work computer. But basically all it's really doing is it's finding that particular element by the ID, and then it's getting all the text that lives with inside that element. Now keep in mind, you can have tags inside of a tag. So for example, this is our div tag and that's our anchor tag. So it's gonna go and get all the actual text that belongs inside of that tag, even if there's nested tags in there. So you just gotta be a little careful when you're navigating by the tags because sometimes you might get back more than you were necessarily expecting. So that's why it's really important when you're web scraping to actually explore the document before you just start going in there and grabbing everything. Okay, so now that we've done that, Let's get, uh, in some, like in this example, we're gonna get multiple elements that all have something in common. So for example, like a class name. So in this case, we're gonna grab an HTML elements collection. So this returns multiple elements. Now in this case, I do like to actually declare a, a variable. And so we'll do IE elements as, and it's very important that you do I HTML uh, element collection. Now you're going to see HTML element connection and IHTML element connect collection. IHTML is the one that you want to use. And we're going to set that IE elements equal to the documents itself. And we're going to get the elements by class name. Now I want something that has uh, basically multiple ones. So more than likely the ones that have this one. So for example, if I can cover over it. Okay. I think, oh yeah, this one. We want the shelf item. And so if I put this one here, um, it will do that. And so this will grab that. And once we have it, let's just kind of verify that we actually got something. What I like to do is I just like to print the length. So print the length of the element. And so debug print IE elements dot length. And so this just returns how many elements were in that collection, at least from my best knowledge. It's kind of hard because the documentation on this is very limited. In fact, I couldn't find anything um, that was actually there for the HTML object library, at least at first glance. Well, there was one, but it wasn't structured to what I was used to seeing. So some of it I kind of had to read a little bit and just experiment. But as you can tell, there's 56 components. So definitely a lot. There should be enough there to, um, <clears throat> uh, what is it, you know, work with all that kind of stuff. Now we have this collection, maybe for example, we, we want to grab just, you know, one element, right? So in this example, we can grab a specific element. So we'll just grab a specific elements and we'll do an i html element and then what we'll do oh no oh. i'll grab a specific elements i don't know why i kept as up there but really all we're doing is we're going to dim and then do ie elements 
and then this will be an I HTML element. So a single element in that collection. And we're going to set that equal to the elements collection. And then we're going to call the item method. And then simply you can either pass through a name or an index. Very rarely are you going to know the name. So just go with the index. Let's just grab this, you know, the second one or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and once we have this element, there's a lot of different properties that we can print about it. The thing that you have to keep in mind though is elements can be different and elements can have different properties. So for example, some elements can have text, other ones don't have text. Some have a title, some don't have a title, some have a class name, some don't. So you just have to keep in mind that you're gonna have to be a little bit careful in the sense of just because one element had a certain property doesn't mean the next element that you're working with necessarily has that property. Now, I'm not going to run through all of them just because there's a ton. But for example, maybe I want to see if this particular one has, you know, a title. I'm not really sure if it has a title, but we're going to find out. Um, and then I also want to see the class name, right? So something, again, that ideally it should have because we just selected it by a class name. But again, you never know. And then we'll also uh, do something like the IE elements and we'll do the inner HTML and then we'll do debug print IE elements and we'll do the we'll do inner text why not inner text right now there's obviously more <laughs> you know if I if I looked here you have children class name uh, ID inner text you know there's certain boolean properties uh, there's some event stuff, things like that. It's a lot of different information here. Uh, source index, style, tag name, title, just a lot of different stuff that you can technically get about it. But this is the one of the cool things I like about this library is there's so much you can grab with it. <clears throat> and so what I'll do is I'll clear this out. I'm gonna close some of these windows so that way I don't have like eight running in the background. Cause every time I run it, I have to, you know, it doesn't. Okay, so you can see here, um, it looks like it didn't have a title, but it did have the class ID. So that makes sense, or the class name. This is the actual HTML that exists in it. And then here's all the actual text. And so, 2 million views. So let's see if we can find the one that has 2 million views. Okay, so it looks like 0, 1, 2. So that's the second one. That's great and it got all the information about it. So that's grabbing a specific element and you know just doing certain properties with it. Now that's all great and dandy, but what happens if we wanna work with multiple collections, right? So maybe we wanna get all the anchors and maybe we want to take those anchors and put them into you know an Excel workbook or something like that. So uh, I'm actually gonna finish the video here because I think it's kind of running over a little bit, but in the next video, we're gonna continue our little exploration of the scraping, and we're gonna start looking at anchors, um, images and stuff along that nature to actually go and get it and then store it in an Excel workbook. So that's kind of the ultimate goal, right? We have all this code, we wanna parse it, and then we wanna put it into our Excel workbook where it's useful. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna do that with anchors, and then we're also going to do that with images too, just so that way we kind of have something to work with. So thanks again for watching, everybody. We're going to see you in that next video.